2019, we saw the Game Boy Color modding community flourish. There are so many ways to customize your Game Boy console, and of course, many ways to backlight it as well. As we begin the year 2020, I think we will continue to see a proliferation of creative handheld console mods. So, we have now arrived to the last backlight solution I'll be reviewing in this five-part series. This solution comes from the state of Iowa, in the Midwest region of the United States. With that, welcome to part five, and this series conclusion, where we look at the company Midwest Embedded and their solution to backlighting the Game Boy Color. Hi everyone, my name is Tito and welcome to the last part of this Retro Renew series. Today, we're going to talk about the Midwest Embedded Backlight Kit for the Game Boy Color and also do a retrospective on this entire series. If this is your first time watching my channel and you're interested in repairing, restoring, or modifying retro game consoles, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Midwest Embedded is a company based out of Iowa right here in the United States. This company sort of showed up out of nowhere, and this backlight kit is their only product. Unlike Ben Venn and McWill, who are somewhat longtime innovators in the modding community, Midwest Embedded never had a product release before this kit showed up in the market. I haven't done much research on this company, but if you know any sort of history of the founders, please share with the rest of us by leaving a comment. I'm really curious about these guys, and I hope they continue to release new products because I really like what they did with this kit. Be sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of this video because I'll discuss three important topics regarding this mod. Those items are the relative difficulty of this mod in comparison to all the other backlighting solution, the cost of this mod, and lastly I'll go over the functionality and general quality of the product as well as my overall thoughts. In addition, I'll go over all the Game Boy Colors that I have modded in this series. I'll tell you which ones I like and which ones I don't like as much, as well as the pros and cons of each. And because by doing this series, I have five backlit Game Boy Colors, I'm going to be doing a giveaway sometime in the future for one of these because really, who needs five backlit Game Boy Colors? So if that's something you are interested in, please subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss the giveaway announcement. In the meantime, there's a lot of rules and legislation that governs giveaways, so I'll be doing a fairly extensive amount of research before I officially launch the giveaway campaign. And also, leave a comment below for which Game Boy Color you think I should give away. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's just dive right in. To do this mod, you're going to need the following items. Please feel free to pause the screen so you can take note of them. Alright, once you've gathered all your tools and parts, we can start the modification. Okay. To start this mod, we're going to use the provided template to use as a guide to trim the Game Boy Color shell. Cut the template so we can place it on the front housing. Make sure it is oriented correctly, with the printed side facing up. With the template in place, mark the area that needs to be trimmed. I used the light on the back of my cell phone so that I could see the line that I needed to trace. I used a craft knife to make the marks on the areas that needed trimming, but a marker would work as well. With the markings transferred to the front housing shell, begin to score the plastic as shown. And of course, be sure to use eye protection. After you have sufficiently scored the plastic, you can begin to trim. I use my flush cutters and pliers to aid in the process. Don't worry about doing a perfect job. This area will be covered by the glass screen lens.
Before moving forward, let's clean our workstation. Continue to refine the trimmed area until you have proper fitment of the LCD. Now that the LCD fits securely into the front shell housing, we can begin to solder. For this mod, I will enable the dimming functionality by soldering three wires to the P02, P03, and P12 test pads. I'll be using some epoxy coated magnet wire at about 6 inches in length each. Be sure to use something like magnet wire, as it will be the least disruptive to the button membranes. Once the wires are soldered, route them through the cartridge pins so that they end up at the top of the motherboard. Secure them in place with a piece of Kapton tape. Next we will need to solder another wire to ground and to the VCC through hole. You can use cartridge pin 32 for ground as I have. Now it's time to solder these wires to the Midwest embedded kit. Let's add some solder to the pads first. Solder each of the wires to their corresponding pad on the PCB. They are all clearly marked. Here you can see how everything looks. Take note of the location of the VCC through hole. Great, with the wiring done and all the buttons and membranes in place, let's button up the console. Don't forget to reattach the RF shield to the rear housing using the four Phillips screws.
Now use the six trialing screws to secure the rear housing to the front. Now let's adhere the custom screen glass lens to the shell. I'm using an older glass screen lens which requires you to place your own double-sided tape. All new glass screen lenses from Bluish Squirrel and Jelly Belly Customs have the tape already applied. Great. Now put the batteries in and let's give it a test. But first, let's clear our workspace. Wow, this just looks amazing. Another great way to backlight your Game Boy Color. All right, with the mod completed, let's see how it stacks up in the following areas. In terms of difficulty, this one is one of the more difficult kits to install. It's certainly not a drop-in solution by any measure because there's a significant amount of trimming that you need to do to the shell, as well as some required soldering, mostly to power the unit. As far as cost goes, this is sort of middle of the range between the Freckle Shack and the McWill kit. This kit will run you about $65 US with an additional $4 for shipping within the United States for a total of roughly $70. For international orders, shipping jumps to about $16 US. Lastly, let's talk about the functionality. I think this kit offers the best dimming functionality. It requires additional soldering, but it gives you so much better control of dimming than the Freckle Shack kit does. I also really like how the LCD is mounted. It's sort of hard to explain, but the way the LCD is installed in the Game Boy, it almost sits right up against the lens. The other kits have their LCD more recessed with a larger air gap between the LCD and the lens. Having the LCD so close to the lens gives a much more premium and updated look. It's something that is hard to explain, but very aesthetically pleasing to see. This kit also self-centers itself, much like the McWill kit, not needing any brackets like the Freckle Shack kit does. So this concludes part five of this series. Midwest Embedded is a new player in the retro modding community and I really hope we see more of what they have to offer in the future. All right, we've seen four unique ways to backlight the Game Boy Color. I'm gonna summarize how each unit did in each of the three categories we looked at and rank them accordingly within each category, with one being the most favorable and four being the least. I will finish off with my favorite one and then my least favorite one. For the sake of this summary, I'll be comparing only version two of the Freckle Shack, since version one is no longer available, and version 1.1 of the McWill which I did not install during this series since the 1.0 version is actually no longer available as well. So to start, let's look at the difficulty of each mod. At number four, the AGS 101 is bar none the most difficult way to backlight your Game Boy Color. The amount of modification needed to the shell is incredibly substantial. If you're gonna use a boxy pixel shell to do this mod in order to avoid all the shell modifying required, you're gonna then need to do a significant amount of modification to the motherboard to fit it into the boxy pixel shell. So no matter which path you choose, there is a lot of work involved in this solution. At number three, Midwest Embedded is the next most difficult mod. There is a significant amount of trimming needed for the shell compared to the McWill and the Freckle Shack. It also requires soldering. At number two, it's a tie between the Freckle Shack version two and the McWill version 1.1. They both require a bit of trimming to the shell in order to complete the mod, which isn't all that bad, but prevents this from being a true drop-in solution. Now, I know you guys are wondering what happened to number one. 
Well, in this series, I did not have a chance to review a true drop-in solution, and all these kits require some sort of modifying in order to complete. I'm saving the number one spot for a future mod that is truly drop-in. Okay, let's move the cost. Here is how I rank them. At number four, again, we have the AGS-101 mod. This is by far the most expensive because of the rarity of some of the components needed, as well as the miscellaneous components that you need to do in order to complete this mod. Not to mention, if you decide to get a boxy pixel shell, those are super expensive. Next is the McWill. This kit comes in at about $75 without shipping. At number two, we have the Midwest Embedded Solution. The kit costs $65 and is $10 cheaper than the McWill kit. And at number one, we have the Freckle Shack. These kits have been running at around $50 without shipping. Still, with shipping from Australia, you are right around the Midwest Embedded Cost territory. Plus, it comes with a rear Game Boy Color sticker, which is a cool added bonus. So, the Freckle Shack wins this category. Lastly, let's look at the functionality. Here are how things shook out. At number 4, we have the AGS-101 once again. This does not have the option for screen dimming, and there is a bit of light bleed because the entire border around the image on the LCD is bright white, and it can be distracting at points. Next at number 3 is the McWill kit. While this does have the option to add a VGA output to the Game Boy Color, I find that there are better ways to output to a television. This kit also does not have the ability to dim the screen either. At number two, we have the Freckle Shack. This kit does have the ability to dim, but the implementation leaves something to be desired, which is why I put the Midwest Embedded Unit at number one. The Midwest Embedded Unit has great control of the backlight, and I really like how the LCD is mounted so close to the lens. It's excellent. All right, so here's a summary of all the rankings. Now, one thing I did not look at is battery life. I didn't really have a way to normalize the results for such a category. With so many variables, such as some units having the ability to dim the screen while others are using aftermarket lithium ion batteries, this would have been very difficult to judge. The YouTuber Mako has good videos on power consumptions for some of these units. I would check his channel out. I put a link in the description below. All right, so this concludes this series on backlighting the Game Boy Color. I wanna thank you all for joining me, and I hope you found this series both informative and entertaining to watch. If you did enjoy this series, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell. It'll really help me out. And please leave a comment about your favorite way to backlight the Game Boy Color. And if I didn't cover it, I may just do a video on it in the future. And once again, thank you so much for your support and being a part of this channel. We'll see you next time.